Kyle Brad from Chaparral Motorsports here with Michael Lindsay, and we're out here at Sand Hollow, Utah, testing out the brand new Honda Talon R and the Honda Talon X. Now, Michael was out here all day yesterday mobbing these vehicles. What can we expect out here? Uh, I mean, the terrain's really unique here. I've gotten to ride a work trace here, so I've been in the sand a lot here. It's a red sand. It's a little wet from all the rain, so it's it's packed in a little more. It's actually pretty rough, which was pretty interesting to test out how both car suspension systems would work other than just hitting sand rollers all day. Uh, a little bit of short sand dunes, uh, a couple bigger sections, a lot of rock crawling in the R's we got to do was actually really fun, real low pace, uh, spotter kind of style area. Um, and a little bit of hard pack uh, desert rollers on the way back, so a good little mix they were able to nail out here for I mean if we're only out like 45 minutes an hour in each car like we got to hit a pretty good terrains before we'd stop and trade out that's epic so if you didn't already know about it if you haven't been following our channel we're out here at Sand Hollow Utah testing out the new Honda Talon now the Talon's a very unique vehicle it's the first vehicle they hit the market that has a DCT transmission now what that means it's dual clutch transmission so this thing isn't going to be like a CVT it doesn't have a belt so there's no shift no slipping of the belt no overheating no snapping belts this is a true transmission now it's an automatic if you run it in the automatic mode or you can paddle shift it, which is amazing. So talk a little bit about the automatic and the paddle shift and kind of where you used either one of those. Well, the biggest thing for me is the first place I'd start describing it is it's engaging. Like CVT setups for me coming from a real heavy moto background, they're just so mash and play. Uh, I, I, they're not, it's not that they're not fun, they're just not as engaging or exciting to me. Uh, this experience here, it really gives you the both ends. The auto is pretty intelligent and there's a standard automatic and an automatic sport. Standard auto is great in the rock on the low speed, even if you're just on trail ride that isn't that spirited. It thinks well for itself, um, it keeps you right in the meat of the torque. It wouldn't be that dissimilar from somebody that's used to driving a CVT other than you actually hear the engine running through the RPM range. The shifts are pretty quick, so it's not that intrusive. Punch in sports mode and it's actually got parameters and it's really cool. If you're driving mellow, it's a little more aggressive than standard, but if you get out there and start really mobbing it and just heavy in the throttle, heavy in your braking zones, um, it starts placing those shifts more aggressive. It'll rev out farther and it'll downshift earlier to get you more engine braking while setting up. So it also allows you to set the car a little different. And then going to full manuals where I really like it because I'm able to transfer a lot of what I have from a motorcycle into the driving experience. And most of that comes into the early downshifts, being able to load up the car, pitch it in uh, on exits, high R RPM, it's skipping a little bit. You can grab a short shift and get to track. If you're on acceleration shop, you can grab that shift early, get in the torque, get it squat down. And it's it's just a way more engaging experience because you can drive the car in so many different ways and really just kind of open up that, that experience. So if you were going to compare these cars and how they're set up and how the transmission works as compared to a traditional side-by-side, -side, what would you say the big difference people are going to notice when they get inside the seat? Like I said, I think the feel like from a feeling standpoint is actually getting to experience an engine that is going through its workload range. Um, actually being able to feel the RPM going up and down, hearing the sound, feeling the difference in power as it pulls through the range compared to that flat tone torque feel on a CVT. Um, like I said, it just it, it opens up the driving experience a bit. Um, I really think a lot of people will find that the auto sport mode is really good. I honestly would drive in it probably most of the time and only override it on maybe some more aggressive downshifts I'd like. Um, I drove a manual because it's wet and I was looking for more short shifts on the acceleration shop, but it's, uh, I talked to a lot of guys that drove it and I've been really impressed with Honda's DCT technology. Um, I, I did a big test last year with the Africa Twins because it has basically the same power plant and a, a similar setup in it. And um, you know, I'm a, I'm a moto guy. I think I want to shift everything. And at the end of the day, I, I did a back and forth between the two and look the DCT is amazing um, especially like I said the ability for it to the parameters they allow it to think for itself and I think the biggest thing is uh, just the engage feel from the, the paddles is really good it's a little bit of a long pull but it's it's nice when it clicks in it's a really sharp quick transmission you don't have much lag on it which I was worried about in this style of product if there would be that that lag in the pull but you can just stay flat to the floor and just keep pulling gears and keep running it through the range. It's it's really rewarding when you rev it right up to the top range, grabbing it, slaps back into the torque and keeps pulling it. It's really fun. 
That sounds cool. Now, that was a concern of mine. I mean, the, the horsepower of this vehicle isn't much different than the horsepower of the Africa Twin, and the Africa Twin is a significantly lighter vehicle. So I was worried that these cars would be super underpowered, but from what I've seen so far, that's really not the case. No, I mean, if you are if you dork off and you put in manual and you don't ever downshift it, yeah, you can bog it really bad on a hill and you're like, uh, which I, th I think I, I noticed that a little bit if, like I said, if you're really from the CVT side, if you're not used to shifting it, I think the auto sports great because manual, yeah, you, it will eventually, if it about dies, it'll auto downshift for you and force it down so the engine doesn't doesn't kill out. But no, if you is it, it shifts so intelligently, it really does a great job at keeping it in the meat of the power. Um, so you never really feel like there's a loss, even as you just if you just turn around the base of some deep, steep dune, it'll run through its range really well. All right, so stepping over here to Wayne. So Wayne, you're with Honda. What's your job here at Honda? Man, so I'm the project leader for the sales and marketing division for the Talon project. So I've been with this project since day one. A few years ago, we started made the concept with the uh, guys at R&D and I've been there every step of the way making sure that we stayed true to the targets that we set for this model and uh, now we're about to launch it and get it out there to the market. It's cool. Now I was really surprised. The suspension on this, like we come up to faces that were a foot and a half tall and I kind of braced myself for that that initial thud that you that I typically feel when I'm in a side by side that has different suspension than this setup. What makes the suspension so plush when it just rolls right over that stuff? Yeah, so the R is made for like open type desert terrain, big whoops, sand dunes, all that kind of stuff. So it's got 17.7 inches of travel in the front and 20.1 inches of travel in the rear. And we set it up with enough damping. When you come into one of those faces, we want to make sure that that ride stays composed. Like that's really what we wanted was to make it confidence inspiring for both the driver and the passenger. Like you want them not to feel any big impacts and you always want to have something more in reserve. This vehicle can cover ground at a lot of speed through big whoops so it's always got a little bit more you know if you come up on something you don't expect it's got enough in reserve it can swallow that up and just keep you tracking straight down the trail just the way that the suspension just kind of I don't want to say walked over that stuff, but it, it there was not really that big bounce back and forth that I felt a lot in some other vehicles. Yep. It kind of felt like the suspension was just doing this. It was really nice. Yeah, and a big part of that on the R is in the rear, we have what we call four plus link rear suspension. And the upper link is that, we call it a plus link because it's got three connection points versus most links only have two connection oh. points. And what that does is that feeling that you're talking about is a big product of that because with 20 inches of travel, if you use some different suspension designs, you'll actually get a toe change in that rear tire as it cycles through the stroke. And it's actually the rear tire steering as it goes through the stroke. With this four plus link, it allows us to control that toe and keep that tire pointed completely straight. We've only got 0.3 degrees of toe change through the whole 20.1 inches of vertical axle travel. So what that does, it always keeps that rear end planted feeling. You never feel like on some other side by sides when you get into the big bumps, some of them you start to feel them like they're walking side to side and it kind of gives you an uneasy feeling. Whereas our unit is always just tracking straight, digging in, putting the power to the ground and just, again, making you and the passenger feel super confident. Now, something I thought was really interesting was we're running some pretty high tire pressures. I mean, higher than we typically run out there in the Glamis sand dunes. Um, I did notice we're running 15-inch wheels, and the tires are, what, 28s? Correct. So a relatively small tire for a larger wheel. Is there, what's the reason behind that? Yeah, so we uh, we selected the 15-inch wheel because uh, we've got really big knuckles front and rear and big brakes. So in order to fit those inside the wheel, we had to go with a 15-inch wheel. Um, we started off with the 28-inch tire just because it's a good all-around tire and it's pretty versatile in all areas of the country. And like you were saying, we're running our standard 16-inch or sorry, 16 psi of tire pressure that we use in the R. Just because, like I said, the R can go fast through some rugged terrain and it's really that 16 psi is our starting recommendation for everybody and that really prevents any pinch flatting and everything so it's a compromise if you're in a place like glamis you're running pure sand you can bump that pressure down because you don't have to really worry about the pinch flats 
But out here, we did. I mean, look at the footage. We had some really gnarly rocky sections. So choosing that perfect PSI to be able to climb over the rocks and not get flats and then to cruise across the sand and not bury yourself, it's pretty interesting. Um, what are some of the things we're going to see tomorrow? So today we're in the R version and tomorrow we're in the X version. Yep. What What is so different about the X that's going to be something we're going to feel and see tomorrow? Yeah, so the R version, you know, we did the, we did the open desert today, big whoops, sand dunes, all that kind of stuff. Tomorrow we're headed up into the mountains. We're going to be riding a two track, a really twisty two track trail. It goes for about 21 miles and the whole time it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's really what the X excels at is that uh, when you are prioritizing precision and just like quick direction changes. So the X it su stays super flat in the corners. Uh, I heard a couple of the uh, magazine guys that drove this week say it felt like a rally car. Mm -hmm. And that is really kind of the image that we were thinking of. Um, the X version is five inches shorter. Is it really? Yep. I didn't know that. Yep, five inch shorter wheelbase, five inches narrower, and it's got five inches less travel in the rear. Mm -hmm. And again, it's to give you that, that quick, precise, no flat cornering feel. Like a sport car suspension. Exactly. It's like a sports car and you know it, it's really well set up for a lot of the trails that we see across the country. You know it's a big country and there's so much different terrain that we have so that's why we took one platform and made two versions and they have a very different character which you're going to see tomorrow and I think you're going to be excited and for your customers you know that go up into the mountains and, and that's usually where they are in that tighter terrain the X is really going to excel. Awesome. Kyle Bratz from Shabra Motorsports. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Oh, so Out here at the Honda Talon release, like I said, we're riding the R model today. It was a lot of fun. I'm Kyle. Until next time, take care and ride safe.